The door to mercy is closed. Allah shuts it. And now comes down the ayah. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكَ لَيَبْعَثَنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَنْ يَسُومُهُمْ سُوَ الْعَذَابِ And your Lord has now announced that He's now going to raise against them those who will inflict upon them until the last day the worst possible punishment. Who are they that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will now raise? The hadith is in Sahih Bukhari, in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ came into the masjid, found his companions talking. He asked, what are you talking about? They said, we're talking about the signs of the last day. He said, the last day would not come until, and he mentioned ten. Number one, Dajjal. Number two, Gog and Magog. Number three, the return of the son of Maryam. Number four, Dukhan or spoke. Number five, Dabatul Ard. And whenever Allah and His Messenger uses the word Ard in connection with the last stage, almost always it is, it is Al Ardul Muqaddasa. And so Dabatul Ard is almost certain to be, almost certain to be Dabatul Ardul Muqaddasa. A beast to come out of the Holy Land. Number six, that the sun would rise from the west. Number, uh, on this one, I'm not going to say anything. The sun rising from the west. I wasn't going to say anything. Number seven, eight, and nine, three movements of the earth, three landslides, the earth opening and swallowing what it swallows, one in the east, one in the west, and the third one in Arabia, which is the one that will confirm that this is the Imam, Imam al Mahdi. And number 10, a fire will come out of Yemen and will drive people to their place of assembly, which is Arafat. These are the 10 major signs. Apart from these 10 major signs, there are numerous minor signs. Numerous. We don't have the time to mention them, but you'll find in my book, One Jamaat, One Amir, at the beginning, there's a chapter entitled The Age of Fitan. I think I need to rewrite that chapter and expand it now. But in that chapter, The Age of Fitan, you'll see a number of the signs which are not in the 10 major signs. Now, what are those who are now going to be raised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Clearly number one and most important of all is Dajjal. Clearly most important of all is Dajjal. And tonight we're going to spend a little time on Dajjal. It's going to be Gog and Magog. And since we already dealt with the subject on the subject, on the subject of Imam al-Mahdi and the return of the Khilafah, we need not go back to Gog and Magog. And number three, Dabbatul Ar. They're now going to be raised against Banu Israel and inflict upon Banu Israel until the last day, the worst possible punishment. Who is Dajjal? I want to urge you to study this subject with great care. But when you want to study the subject of Dajjal, it isn't like studying physics. You must turn the heart to Allah. Cleanse and purify the heart. Make two rakat nafus salat, for example. Eh? And beg him with tears in your eyes. Oh Allah, kindly guide me that I may understand this subject. When you make me understand it, it will be so easy for me. But if you do not open the veils, not even with a PhD will I be able to understand the subject of Dajjal. Hmm? This is my advice to you before I leave you. When they boasted of what they did to the true Messiah, they rejected him. He can't be the Messiah because he's a bastard, when I was a Minhada, etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to this. He created Dajjal, who is a person, not a system, a person. And endowed the Jal with awesome power, awesome versatility, and a PhD in, in deception. When the Jal is released into the world, it would be after the door to mercy is closed to Banu Israel. Only then would he be released into the world. And now with the change in Qibla, Qibla we know the door to mercy is now closed. When the Jal is released into the world, his basic function is to impersonate the Messiah. This is why he's known as Al-Masih al-Dajjal. 
if he is to impersonate the Messiah and convince the Jews that he is indeed the Messiah, then he'd have to rule the world from Jerusalem with what would appear to be the end of history, eternal rule. In order for him to do that, logical deduction, number one, he'd have to liberate the Holy Land of non-Jewish rule. Number two, he'd have to bring the Jews back to the Holy Land, not as tourists, but to reclaim the land as theirs. Number three, he'd have to restore a state of Israel in the Holy Land and get the Jews to believe that this is the Israel of Nabi Dawood al-Islam and Nabi Sulaiman al-Islam. Of course it would not be. But since they only see with one eye, they're deceived. And number four, which has not as yet happened, which is about to happen. I suggested to you when I came last December that maybe this is going to take place within the next five to ten years. Maybe even less than that. But remember, this is only guesswork on my part. I can be wrong. What I know for certain, it's going to be soon. <laughs> that I know. That he has to cause the state of Israel to become the ruling state in the world. And that's where I want to spend some, some time tonight. So let's get quickly with the lecture. <coughs> when Dajjal is released, therefore, this is what Dajjal will have to do. Eventually rule the world from Jerusalem with what would appear to be eternal rule. And Banu Israel then would, would be taken on a ride. And it'll be the last ride on which they'll ever go. Yeah. This will be the most fantastic act of deception ever recorded in history. This one. So we are living in fascinating times. If we'll only take a little time to study the book of Allah and to study the word of the Prophet with two eyes, not with one. When Dajjal is released, said the Prophet he would live on earth for 40 days, one day like a year, one day like a month, one day like a week, and the rest of his days like your days, Sahih Muslim. This hadith is so important that we got a, an artist in Malaysia to take this hadith and design the cover of this book with three circles there. You can see the three circles. One day like a year, one day like a month, one day like a week. And the rest of his days will be like your days. When his day is like our day, he's living in our dimension of time. Anybody differs with that? When he's living in our dimension of time, we'll be able to see him. The Prophet described him, he'll be a Jew, be a young man, powerfully built, curly hair. Of course, we understand the two eyes, the left eye symbolizes external vision, the blind, right eye which is blind symbolizes internal blindness. But if you defer with me, that's your privilege, that's your privilege. When Dajjal is released and his day is like our day, where would he be on earth? Of course, he has to be in Jerusalem ruling the world from Jerusalem. And the Jews are now absolutely convinced this is the Messiah. This is the man. That one on the cross was false. This is the man. <coughs> Why? Because the Jews have been ruling the world. Because the golden age has come back. And therefore this must be the true Messiah. Mm -hmm. But when he comes into our day, he's going to only live for about 37 days. Mm -hmm. Or maybe less than that, depending upon a day like a year, a day like a month, a day like a week. The question is, where would he be when he's released on earth in a day which is like a year? Where would he be on earth when his day is like a month? And where would he be on earth when his day is like a week? We went to the hadith of Tamim al-Dari. Let's go back one more time, very quickly. It is there in Sahih Muslim. Tamim al-Dari is a Christian who takes the shahada, became, the, became a Muslim in Medina. He came to the Prophet ﷺ and narrated something. The Prophet ﷺ asked the people to sit down in the masjid. 
So Tamim Mudari came to me and told me something about Dajjal which confirms what I've been saying to you. So this is true. This is true. The rest comes now from the lips of the Blessed Prophet He said that Tamim Mudari and some of his companions, about 30, 40 of them, went on board a ship. And then the ship was tossed in the wave, so a storm. For a whole month. Until they reached land. If you're on the western side of Arabia, because that's where Tamim Udari is, the western side of Arabia, and you get on board a ship, the ship has to be either in the Red Sea or the Mediterranean Sea. Although somebody in Cape Town told me the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> either the Red Sea or the Mediterranean Sea. We eliminate the Red Sea because it's too narrow. If a storm is blowing for a whole month, the ship would not remain for a whole month before reaching land, so we left with only the Mediterranean Sea. After one month, they reached an island. The Hadith does not tell us how they knew it was an island. They got on shore, and there they were confronted by a very hairy beast. A very hairy beast. Don't fall asleep, huh? A very hairy beast. So much hair that you can hardly tell which side is head and which side is tail. And the beast now speaks to them. Says, I am Jassasa. Jassasa, wala tajassasu, suratul hujurat, do not spy. We always tell them that. But they like the check that comes from the CIA and the FBI. They love that check. Oh, yes. But one day the earth will speak and they will be exposed. Do not spy. This is just a uh, spy. So an island of people who have a PhD in spying and espionage, hmm? intelligence work, and then just uh, directs them to a monastery. And they go hurriedly to the monastery because they want to get away from just uh, so when they reach there, they find this powerful man, young man, powerfully built, curly hair, but nothing about his eyes in the hadith. And he's in chains, his hands are chained to his neck, his feet are chained with the nicest way. If any robbers come to rob you and you catch hold, the best way to, rob, to tie them up. And now, this man starts to question them, very interesting questions. We don't have the time to go through those questions, but we have them in this book here. And then after the questioning is over, the man says, I am Dajjal. I am Dajjal. So up to that moment in Medina, after the Hijra, Dajjal had not as yet been released. Okay? He says, I am Dajjal. And when I am released, I will enter every town and every city. But he didn't mention villages. So now we know from this hadith that when Dajjal is released and launches his mission to impersonate the Messiah and therefore to ultimately rule the world from Jerusalem, it is from this island that he must launch his attack. And the question that we ask is which island is it? We give an answer, but you don't have to agree with us. Yes, you don't have to agree. This is our answer. But if you defer with us, then you should point out to us which is the correct answer. You cannot simply defer with me for fun and games. No, that's not serious. If you defer with me, you must point out to me which island it is. My answer is the island of Britain. And now I'm beginning to understand history. Because I'm a student of international relations. Britain suddenly and mysteriously becomes the ruling state in the world. Yes. The Russians had contempt for the British. The French had more than contempt for the British. Napoleon referred to them as a nation of shopkeepers. Hmm? But this Britain, a little island off the coast of Europe, which never walked on the stage of history, this Britain suddenly and mysteriously and mystifyingly and bafflingly, this Britain becomes the ruling state in the world. It could not have happened by accident. 
What is the explanation? This is my explanation. This is the Jal at work. If you have another explanation, I want to hear it. The scientific and technological revolution emerges from Britain. We don't have the time to go through it. But if you are young, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 tonight, son and daughter, I, I have this homework to give to you. Go and study the scientific and technological revolution. Study it back to front and seek to understand what is happening and link the scientific and technological revolution to the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ pertaining to Dajjal. Dajjal will step into the ocean and the water would reach him up to his knee. Huh? If they want to wait for a very tall man who one day will step into the ocean and when he steps into the Atlantic Ocean the water will reach him up to his knee. Well, we should allow them to wait for that to happen. Okay? But when TW800 crashed into the ocean off the coast of Long Island, when Egypt A900 crashed off the coast of Boston, huh? notice that these aircraft took off from New York. Did you notice that? Why did it happen from an aircraft that took off from New York? Because New York is the center of news of the world today. All the major news agencies have their headquarters in New York. That's why the aircraft had to take off from New York. So that this event will get maximum publicity. Which is why the aircraft had to hit the two World Trade Center towers in New York. If you had hit the Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur, you ain't gonna get all that publicity. Eh? If you hit some buildings in Sydney <coughs> Harbor, you're not gonna get that publicity. So you gotta hit a target in New York to get the maximum publicity. Hmm? When these aircraft fell into the ocean, did you notice what happened? A display, a display, a dazzling display of modern technology. That the Americans were able to go down to the bottom of the ocean and pick up the pieces of this aircraft and then reassemble the aircraft so that they had 90-something percent of the aircraft recovered and reassembled. If that was not stepping into the ocean with the water reaching you to your knee, well, what is it? Hmm? So I want you to go and study the scientific and technological revolution, which emerges from Britain. Study it like the back of your hand and seek to relate it to the ahadith and Dajjal. Britain becomes the ruling state in the world. And Britain becomes the ruling state not only on the basis of military power, the scientific and technological revolution being applied to military science, military power, military technology. Britain becomes the ruling state in the world also because Britain has control over money of the world, the Bank of, the bank of England. Hmm? And Britain rules the world for a day which is like a year. It is during the time that you had the Balfour Declaration that it is the intention of the British government to work for the establishment of a Jewish national home in the Holy Land. Nineteen, seventeen. We explained to you in the lecture of Imam al-Mahdi and the return of the Khilafah the deal with the Jews. Then came 1919, and what happened? The British army defeats the Turkish army, liberates the Holy Land. Britain now assumes control over the Holy Land on a mandate conferred by the League of Nations. Between 1919 and 1948, we have Britain ruling over the Holy Land and opening the doors for the Jews to return. Prior to this, the Ottoman Islamic State never allowed the Jews to return. They can come back as tourists, 
But apart from the small Jewish community which is allowed to live in Jerusalem, the Jews cannot come back to reclaim the Holy Land. In 1948, it is Britain which presides over the birth of the State of Israel. Power being transferred in the night mysteriously without any legal instrument of transfer and the State of Israel is born. This is the first time in European history that there is a transfer of power from a colonizer to a new state after decolonization without a legal transfer of power. First time the State of Israel is born this way. And so my answer is the state of the state the island of Britain is the is the island of Tamimudari. This is my answer. Remember, you don't have to agree with me. If you differ with me, however, you should correct me and tell me which is the correct island. When you do so, you must provide the evidence which supports you. And then came the transfer of power from Britain to the United States. In order for that transfer of power to take place from Britain to the United States, we not only had to demonstrate the superior military power of the United States, which took place in the First World War, while well, Britain was losing the war, but secondly, that the United States now has control over money. And so the Bank of England goes into the background and the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank now assume the position of controlling the world of money. When the United States became the ruling state in the world, again, that was strange because who are these? These are a bunch of people who migrated from a number of European countries to form a new country out there across the ocean, very far away. And that United States of America should now become the ruling state in the world, replacing Britain, is something also extremely strange, difficult to explain, except with the Ahadis on Dajjal. Now, while the United States of America is the ruling state in the world, we notice this strange and mysterious relationship with Israel. Huh? That the United States is defying all kind of rationality to feed Israel, to support Israel, to cause Israel to become stronger, to transfer military technology to Israel, some through the back door, some through the front door. Hmm? And so Israel grows while the United States is the ruling state in the world until Israel becomes a nuclear power and a thermonuclear power. Saddam Hussein in Iraq is not allowed to have any weapons of mass destruction. No. And the Australian government following faithfully behind Uncle Sam points out it's wrong. It is morally wrong to have weapons of mass destruction. Yeah. But the Australian government, of course, doesn't know. Somebody should tell the Australian government about all the weapons of mass destruction that the state of Israel has that the Australian government wouldn't talk about. I hope they're not offended by facts. And if we're not allowed to speak facts, what is there other than this to talk about? The United States of America now feeds and builds the baby until Israel becomes a powerful state on par with other nuclear power states. And now the time has come for the United States to deliver to Israel the status of being the ruling state in the world. And it is here we want to pause now for some microanalysis. This is where we are located now in history. This is where we should be focusing our attention not slandering each other and fighting over chicken feed, but focusing your attention on the moment in history in which we are located. This is the moment of great drama. And blessed are those who have a light with which to see to understand what is happening in the world. When Israel becomes the ruling state in the world, the most surprised man in the universe would be a man named Yasser Arafat. Yeah. He would be the most surprised of all in the whole universe. 
but you in Lakemba would not be surprised. No. So maybe somebody could send him a copy of this book. Huh? <laughs> in order for Israel to replace the United States as the ruling state in the world, first of all, a day which is like a month has to come to an end. I have not calculated how long is a day which is like a month, but maybe you have the time to do that and one of you may take up this research. I am offering a guess that we are now close to the end of a day which is like a month. If Israel is to replace the United States as the new ruling state in the world and to rule the world for a day which is like a week, then something has to happen to diminish American power. American military power does not appear to have anything in the world which can challenge it. And so I'm not looking at American military power, but I'm looking at the American economy. That if you can attack the American economy and cause it to collapse, then that will impact upon America's capacity to fight war. And in the American economy, by far the most vulnerable part of the economy is the dollar. When we speak on, on the subject of Islam and the international monetary system, inshallah, on Wednesday night, and remember, that is the most important lecture of all that I'll be delivering this time. So please ask your friends and your teachers and so on to come to that lecture. When the American dollar is attacked, and the American dollar collapses, and you will see on Wednesday night how easy it is for, for it to happen. Then the whole world of paper money is going to collapse with it. The whole world of paper money will collapse with it. And when paper money collapses, then money is going to be electronic impulses in machines, in banks. Prepare yourself for this now. You can't see money anymore. No, you can't see money anymore. You can't touch money anymore. Money will now become invisible. Money will now become intangible. Money is now electronic impulses in mindless machines in banks. And that would be the most fabulous victory of all for the Jew in his entire inglorious history. That one. And that is around the corner. But in order for Israel to become the ruling state in the world, Israel also has to wage a big war which will establish its credentials as the supreme military power in the world. It has to be a war with dazzling display of military technology, surpassing Uncle Sam. So Israel has to have something secret that even the Americans don't know about. Hmm? When that war takes place, obviously, Dajjal has to expand the territory of the state incrementally. Incrementally means piece by piece until eventually he's able to establish rule over the territory from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates. If you want to take over the land in the river of Euphrates area, you've got to soften up Iraq, make Iraq soft. So you begin by destroying Iraq's nuclear capacity. That was 1980. Secondly, you have the Gulf War in which you set a trap for Saddam Hussein. And he walks into the trap. And when he walks into the trap, you can now unleash this war upon him, which will destroy Iraq militarily. Iraq's army is destroyed. Iraq's air force is destroyed. Hmm? And Iraq's economy is now dismantled through UN economic sanctions until Iraq is relegated back to the old Stone Age. One, Iraq poses no threat to anyone now. No threat at all. 
So this hullabaloo about weapons of mass destruction, actually they're scratching their heads to come up with some kind of an excuse. Why to attack Iraq? Don't you have any idea? Come, let me hear. You give me some idea. Why should we attack Iraq? Huh? So then Shaitan whispers, well, why don't you say weapons of mass destruction? It's good drama from Hollywood. Israel has to wage this big war, which will take her all the way to Iraq, not Iran. No, Israel, I don't think, will attack Iran, but Iraq. Israel has to seize the oil of the Middle East, the Saudi oil, the Iraqi oil, the Kuwaiti oil. And when Israel seizes that oil, the UN Security Council passes resolutions, of course. But will they send any troops? No. The United States and Britain, will they send any troops? No. And so Europe will be stuck. Why do you think the Europeans are making so much noise now? Because the Europeans realize they've been deceived by Britain and the United States. That's why they're now up in arms. Hmm? Europe and Japan will now be like this. Israel will have them by the throat because Israel controls the oil. And in the process, it enhances Israel's credentials to be recognized now as a ruling state in the world. But Israel cannot become the ruling state in the world if this war is very plain and clear to everyone in the world as a war of aggression. So at Minto, I explained why Mr. Bush has to attack Iraq. It is on behalf of Israel, that after Israel has, has committed sufficient atrocities against the Palestinian people, and of course Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera, naturally, because we accept Al Jazeera as ours, huh? Al Jazeera is ours, we one-eyed people. Al Jazeera is ours. Al Jazeera will tell us everything that the other television stations are not telling us. Therefore, Al Jazeera is ours. So when Al Jazeera says it has an interview with Osama bin Laden, all these one-eyed people will say, yes, that's the truth. Al Jazeera is speaking the truth. Well, guess who has established Al Jazeera? Guess who has funded Al Jazeera? That's your homework. When the news has spread all over and all the Arabs are inflamed and in rage, boiling point, and all the pro-American regimes in the Arab world are shaking and shivering. Mubarak in Egypt, Fahad in his hospital bed, Abdullah in Jordan, Sheikh Sabah in Kuwait, shaking and shivering with fear because their people hate them because of what is happening in the Holy Land. Huh? When it has reached boiling point, only then would Israel say to Mr. Bush, now you can attack. Mr. Bush can't attack until Israel gives him permission to attack. Hmm? Israel now gives permission for Bush to attack Iraq. When Bush attacks Iraq, it is not because Iraq poses any threat to anyone. No. There are two reasons for the attack on Iraq. Number one, so you can replace a Sunni regime with now a new Shia regime. So you can expand the Shia world of Iran to encompass Iraq as well. But secondly, when Bush attacks Iraq, then the masses of the Arabs must now spill out into the streets in massive demonstrations against their regimes. The way that Bhutto was brought down and if you think that Bhutto was brought down only by Pakistani people demonstrating, you living in Disneyland. <laughs> huh? The way that the Shah of Iran was brought down, same thing applies. They got the experience. They know, they know it now, how to do it. And so now you see the people going out into the streets and demonstrating. And one or more of these regimes are going to fall. Which one is most likely to fall first? Jordan. That's why Abdullah has his suitcases already packed. <laughs> when any of these regimes fall, 
and is replaced by an anti-American, anti-Israeli, and pro-Islamic regime, it is then that CNN will really come alive. It is then that the media will really come alive. A dazzling display of the power of the media to impress upon mankind around the world that the whole world of Islam is now rising up. And these regimes in the Muslim world are going to fall like dominoes now. <laughs> and the world of Islam is on the go. It's going to be real good drama, you know. Real good drama. And the Jews are now in very grave danger. Muslims are going to cut their throats now. They have to do something. I told you Dajjal has a PhD in deception. Yeah. So now Israel will be expected to do something. The whole world is waiting. What are you going to do? You've got to do something. You Muslim, you're going to cut your throat. And so Israel will say, well, we've got to do something. We've got to launch a preemptive strike. Because mankind is waiting on Israel to do something. Because mankind doesn't know. Israel already planned everything in advance. This, this so-called preemptive strike is in fact a lightning strike. A dazzling display of military power the likes of which mankind has never seen. And before you know what's happening, Israel has taken control of this region. Taken control of the oil. Hmm? And it would not appear to the world that it was a war of aggression. But rather the Jews were simply trying to defend themselves. But Israel cannot become the ruling state in the world when you have a United Nations in New York, can you? Can you? No. Can you shift the United Nations from New York to Jerusalem? No. <laughs> no. 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 Not even Dajjal could accomplish that one. So what's going to happen then? Simple. In the same way that when the United States refused to enter into the League of Nations, the League of Nations eventually collapsed. So too, all that the United States Senate and House of Representatives, the Congress has to do, is to pass a resolution demanding the withdrawal of the United States from the United Nations. And who controls the US Senate and the House of Representatives? The Jews. They control it. <laughs> so the United States withdraws from the United Nations. You think that's impossible? No. And when the United States withdraws from the United Nations, can the United Nations remain in New York? No. Got to pull out. Can't stay in Uncle Sam's country anymore. Huh? That's the end of the UN. Won't be relocated anywhere else in the world. Hmm? There will be no UN after that. What about the World Bank and the IMF? <laughs> Israel cannot be the ruling state in the world when the World Bank and the IMF remain the premier e economic institutions in the world for monetary policy. And so the world will have to have a new international monetary system. Yes. And that is going to be our lecture on Wednesday night. The World Bank collapses, the IMF collapses, and something else now replaces it, which is now located in Jerusalem. So Israel becomes the ruling state in the world. This is where I want you to concentrate your thought on this part of the subject. The passage from the United States to Israel, this passage, in which this one replaces this one as the ruling state in the world. This is where you must do your homework. When Israel becomes the ruling state in the world, of course, the Jews will now be absolutely convinced the golden age has come back, we're ruling the world. This is the Messiah. Then after Israel has ruled the world for a day which is like a week, at that time, of course, Dajjal will appear now in a day which is like our day, so we'd see him in person. That is the time when the water will be dry in the Sea of Galilee. It is at that time that the Imam emerges, Imam al-Mahdi. It is at that time that Dajjal attacks. It is at that time that the confrontation takes place in Damascus. Dajjal is outside, the Imam is inside. It is at that time that Dajjal, that when Dajjal is ready 
for the kill, as, as Fir'aun was ready for the kill, he had Musa Islam and Banu Israel there cornered in front of the sea. Now just to move in, history repeats itself. The Jews have the Imam cornered. History is about to repeat itself. At that time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intervened. He told Musa Islam, strike the water. Divine intervention. And this time, what happens? The son of Mary comes down at that moment with his hands resting on the wings of two angels. Divine intervention. The true Messiah will now kill the false Messiah. And then Gog and Magog will be destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When that happens, it is now that the Muslim army will emerge out of Khorasan. When you see the black flags coming from the direction of Khorasan, go and join that army. Well, then what do we do in the meantime? Just sit down and wait until Imam al-Mahdi comes? No. No. The jihad to liberate the Holy Land has already started. The jihad to liberate the land of Khorasan is already in force. When a jihad is in force, it is far ain, not far kifaya, to participate in the jihad. When the leaders of the jihad demand of you to come and fight with them in person, then you must leave and go. But the leaders of the jihad are not asking you to leave Australia now. Tomorrow they will do. What they are asking for you now is to support the jihad to liberate the Holy Land. Support it with your money. Support it by sending weapons. Support it by standing up and declaring your support for it, even if you have to lose your job. That's what they're asking of you. So when you see the black flags coming from the direction of Khorasan, go and join that army. Even if you have to crawl over ice, because no one will be able to stop that army until it reaches Jerusalem. And so a Muslim army now liberates the Holy Land. And Allah's promise is fulfilled. Wa in Uttum, Udna. If you return with your facade, we will return with our punishment. A Muslim army destroys the state of Israel. And the Islamic State is now established in replacement of this phony state. That Islamic State is presided over by the son of Mary and the Imam. <coughs> that Islamic State now becomes the ruling state in the world and no one can stop that, not even the government of Australia. No one can stop that. If you were 17 or 18 or 19 or 20 or 21 or 22 years of age tonight, my son or my daughter, I want this in your heart tonight. No one can stop that. Islam is going to rule the world tomorrow. So don't give up. For that tahinu. وَتَدْعُوا إِلَى السَّلْمِ وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ وَاللَّهُ مَعَكُمْ وَلَيَّتِرَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ Do not despair. Do not give up. Do not throw in the towel. When you should rather be making the effort to build that power with which you will have the up hand. You will have the upper hand. And in that struggle, remember, Allah is with you, not with them. And Allah will never allow your effort to be in vain. When Islam rules the world from Jerusalem, then the truth of Islam will be validated before mankind. There will be no religion in the world other than Islam. Christianity is gone because he breaks the cross. Judaism is gone because he kills the swine. And there is only one true religion in the world. So jizya is now abolished because there are no more ahlul kitab. Imam al-Mahdi will live for only seven years and die. But Isa al-Islam will live for 40 years. 
he will get married, he'll have children, and then he'll die. And you will perform the Salatul Janazah over his body. And then, said the Prophet, والسلام, he'll be buried next to me in Medina. <coughs> this is the amount of details that we have. I ask you to read this book very carefully. This is the first and only book on the subject so far. Mm -hmm. Read this book very carefully. At the back of this book is my email address. If you differ with me, sure, that's your privilege. But then write to me and tell me where I'm wrong and tell me what is right. Hmm? This book here, try to get this book into the hands of the Australian people, the non-Muslims. Eh? It's a very small booklet. A Muslim responds to the attack on America. It is outside. Get it and give it to those who are not Muslims. Uh, tomorrow night we meet at Ruti Hill for an expanded version of the Muslim village. What is the Muslim village? How should it be established? And then on Wednesday night the most important subject would be Islam and the international monetary system in Liverpool. On Thursday we have a seminar on riba from morning to evening the whole day and then on Friday inshallah we have another seminar in which we take a look at the world of Islam and its politics not immediate moment but from the time of the destruction of the Khilafah to this day what has been the issues which have affected the world of Islam we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may bless you now as you return to the Quran that the Quran may explain to you the world in which you live. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samiul alim. Wa tuba alayna ya mulana inna ka anta tawab rahim. Bi rahmatika ya arham rahimin. Ameen. Ya bayt al-Qudus ilana amalun sata'udhu al-Qudus li ummatina wa nutahhiru sahataka al-adhara wa nanshur fawqa karayatana القدس تنادينا القدس تنادينا One Islam Productions, an Islamic film studio established in Australia, is dedicated to producing films for all Muslims. Just some of the films by One Islam Productions. Children's programs, Islam for Me, We Remember Allah, Storytime and more. Educational films, Pray As You Have and Seen Me Pray, to Words, pray. Ramadan, Renewal Next. of Faith. Documentaries. We at One Islam Productions believe that Islam is precious and deserves to be presented in only the highest quality. Visit us at www.oneislam.net for more information. One Islam Productions, a film production company run by Muslims for Muslims.